Call the water. The date is March 16th, 2017. The time is 6.37 p.m. Rick Charette. Present. David Champion II. Late. Rob Collins. Here. Gary Ciccaroni. Absent. Jim Freeman. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, Ed Camo. Here. Rich, Rich Zacker. Here. Diane Smith. Here. Okay, so we have enough for a call. Okay. Will you sit for Gary, Diane? Yes. Thank you. Who I sit for? I'm sorry? Gary. Yes. Nice. Public comments? Okay. I, sat, I, I spoke with um, I spoke with Gary, and his, he's attending some personal business, and he'll let me know by the end of next week whether he is going to return to the planning board in full standing or give a letter of resignation. So we got it to that point, one way or the other. Nomination and election of the planning board chairman and vice chairman. Mr. Chairman, I move that we, or I nominate uh, David Champy, uh, Mr. Chairman. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Uh, just point of order. You might want to see if anyone else has nominations. All Does anybody else have nominations for chair? Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I thought that would be, be a they, sure way to get him in, right? They did it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I already told him if he doesn't show up, I'm not responsible for what happened to him. <laughs> I motion that we nominate Rob Collins for vice chair. I'll second that. Any other nominations? Discussion? All in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Is that effective when? Now. Right now. Right now. It doesn't have to be sworn. No, they're no, not the they're, 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 they're in the they're on the planning board. Well David was reelected. I'm not sure whether he needs to get resworn in or not, but yet. Oh that's a good question. But he's not here. That's right. So it's almost not relevant. So Diane. Um I have a protocol question. Okay. Uh, congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Uh, on your election. And oh, I thought it was getting ousted for getting ousted as chairman. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but um, uh, so here's my question: uh, Is it is it possible for the chair of the planning board to be a selectman also? No. Have, are you officially a selectman yet? No. Right. And I didn't resign yet either. Okay. Right. Pro another protocol, maybe someone knows. Shall, shall I continue to chair this meeting until he shows up? No. No. You're out. You're nothing now. <laughs> you're, you're just a regular member. Okay. <laughs> so this is my should meeting now. Should, should, <laughs> should, should, should I get up my seat? You're fine where you are. <laughs> can, can I say, can I ask one more protocol? Yeah, sure. Steve Bailey was elected to the planning board? Yes. Have you been sworn in? Not yet. So he's just public right now? Yes. So as soon as you're sworn in, you can uh, participate as a full member. Yep. Um, until then, you're, you know, you're just public, unfortunately, so. That's um, fine. Can you see Virginia Monday? Monday? Yes. Saturday. Well, Saturday is the town meeting. Oh, Saturday? Okay. You'll, you'll be able to catch her there, I'm sure. Can you catch her Saturday? Get sworn in. If that doesn't happen, her regular hours are Monday are afternoon or Tuesday morning. She will sway you. Yes, I do. Do whatever she says. Okay. 
So you've got to wait five days because it was a contested position. So Tuesday, that's someone's going to ask for a recount. Yep. So yep. you've got to wait five days because it was contested. Uh, because it was a more more people than <clears throat> were running for the office than available chairs. Yep. So five days. Is that Saturday, Tuesday? Saturday was the five days. I don't either. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah. Some, maybe Sunday at the earliest. Monday. Monday is good. So maybe, yeah, so maybe you can't be sworn in on Saturday. Um, as selectman. But I can, right? Yes. You could if you're sworn, if you've been sworn in. You can be sworn in because there was no contest for the office. Right. No and, one can contest that. And selectman can swear you in or Virginia. But because it was contested, you can't get sworn in yet. Well, once you swear me in now, so I'm going to hang it out there. It's nothing. Well, well then, then you can take a position on the stage and talk to some of the Warren articles for us. That's right. We're going to wait till that. <laughs> <laughs> wait till Monday. <laughs> yeah. Or at least after Bill's been in the hot seat for you. So. After the meeting. I think Virginia or anyone can do it after the meeting. We don't want to make it easy for you, Diane. For me? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, where are we at? We are at announcements, correspondence, and email. Outdoor fit exercise systems. So outdoor fit exercise systems makes exercise equipment. They have tamper-proof multi-gyms multi that are weatherproof and designed to withstand harsh outdoor environments. And they've sent a brochure. Is that your company, Michelle? <laughs> um, this will be wherever George puts it, because I don't think that we so have action, unless somebody thinks we have action to take on that. You guys want that? You guys want to put in a park right now? No. Okay. Anything else? Is that it? Yeah. No. There's one of the sheet. I mean, yeah. Charles, should I Yes. Amy, you had something? Yeah. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> um, this is from Charlie Shoe. Charlie Shoemaker uh, sent on Wednesday, February 22nd, 2017, 4.48 p.m. Uh, subject, First Net Telecommunications Emergency Network. Good afternoon. My, my name is Charlie Shoemaker. I'm writing due to the implementation of the First Nationwide Emergency Communication Network known as FirstNet. The goal of this project is to provide a feasible, provide a, reliable, provide a reliable, interoperable system of communication between our first responders at every level, local, state, and federal. We are currently in the early stages of the creation of the system and are looking, for, looking at your jurisdiction as a possible site for the project. SAC Wireless, the vendor for the project in the state of New Hampshire, is looking to either co-locate three antennas and radios along with associated equipment on current wireless towers or create new sites within Brookfield. I've read through your zoning ordinance, but still have a few questions I'm hoping you can answer in order to make the zoning and permitting process easier on all parties. Uh, some questions are, are there any laws regulating how close wireless facilities can be to one another? Can you walk me through the zoning process? Is a public safety network such as this exempt? What is the usual turnaround time for a co-location application? A new site build. Will this project require a building permit, an electrical permit? Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. If you would like more information on the First Net system, you can find it at www.firstnet.gov. If it would be easier to speak on the phone, please let me know what time and phone number works best for you. Thanks again for your help. Look forward to your response. I'm um, assuming that we can let Mr. Champy deal with that. Invite him in. I think that would be easiest for us. Well, yeah. Yeah, not easiest for him. But give us an idea of what he's trying to do. That was an excellent point on Okay. Well, I'll, just, I'll let David make that decision. Right? Okay. It's his meeting. It's going to be his meeting. Okay. Um, Review and possible approval of the January 20th and January 27th meeting minutes. No, wait. 
perfect. I'm not getting around thing. That was actually the meeting minutes. Um, review and possible approval of the February 16th, 2017 meeting minutes. Thursday, February 16, 2017, minutes as presented. Do a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, uh, those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. George, I abstain. I'm sorry? I abstain. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm glad you said that. Thank you. Okay. Um, new business, consideration of tax liens as a prerequisite of subdivision slash lot line adjustment approval. Uh, George, thanks for putting this on the agenda. I think we've probably asked you to do that several months ago, um, seems like. Um, I think, if I recall correctly, the issue is that we don't ask about information about tax liens. And uh, somebody could change the value of their property, which is the collateral for the tax lien, by coming to us. So, um, was this something you brought up? It's something that happened. Something happened? Okay, great. Um, yeah. Sure. Uh, can, we, can we recap for the public what exactly this means? So, if someone comes in to put an application in for lot line adjustment, and then they could possibly the, So the issue would be that if you don't pay your taxes after some amount of time, which if somebody cares enough, we could find out what, exactly what the details are, but um, the town puts a lien against your, the property uh, to, it, so that the, and that property is basically collateral against the taxes owed. And if it, it goes on long enough, then they'll take the property and sell it and satisfy the tax lien that way. Is that approximately correct? That's correct. Okay. So the issue would be that it, let's say that somebody has a lien against their property and they're about to lose it. So let's say that somebody, I mean, it could be a, people come up with all sorts of stuff, right? Let's say somebody had two lots that were next to each other. And one lot has their house on it and they're way behind in their taxes, and the other lots, maybe two, you know, a couple acres or something like that, next door, not developed, maybe low tax, super low taxes. They owe fifty thousand dollars on their primary lot where their home is. They do a lot line adjustment. So that, let's say that that's lot A. Lot B is small and easy for them to get caught up in their taxes on that one. So they do a lot line adjustment to move their home onto lot B. Basically, change that line so that it's on the other side of the house. So now lot A is a little two acre lot with $50,000 tax lien against it. Lot B is all caught up and it's 10 acres and has a house on it that has no tax lien. The town can take the two acres, but they're not going to get the $50,000 for that. And that person essentially has made it so that they don't lose their house. Does that 
that would be, I mean, I'm sure there are lots of other iterations of that kind of scenario where somebody could basically move the tax burden, tax lien from their prime pro primary property that's worth a lot to some other piece of property that's not worth much. Could, could have one lot and they subdivide, create a lot, you know, where the new lot is where the house is. And anyway, because the tax lien is by math and lot number. Correct. And so, anyway, yes. Yeah, so the spirit is not to prevent people from protecting their house, but it is uh, some, something that could and uh, allegedly has happened where a lot is subdivided and the piece that was subdivided off turns into the original lot and it's, it no longer has any value and there was a tax lien on it. So. We ask for tax lien validation on a lot of other things in town. So this would be a, um, something in our subdivision rules. That would just be another step. Another have, have the tax collector sign off on it. Well, just make sure we click it that we're told as part of the application if there is a tax lien. Right. And that way, that way we can that judge. Way verified, verified by the collector, right? I'm sorry, you missed it. Whether there's a lien or not on the property, that would be verified by the tax collector. Well, you can check it online. It's online. It's on okay. our website. But we should probably at least ask the question, yes. even if we don't have like a verification step per se. Um, and you know, I mean, Diane. So I guess I'm I'm confused about two things. Um, one, the, the way, and, and I, this just could be a typo, but um, subdivision slash lot line adjustment. And I'm not sure if that should be and lot line adjustment, or if, you know, I'm, I'm not really clear, because you just gave the example of lot line adjustment, which is perfectly understandable the way that you said it. So I think that we need to clarify what we're going to be talking about, whether it's both or just or one. And then secondly, um, I guess I'm, I'm still also a little confused about, so knowing that there's a tax lien and having that as part of the consideration for approval, what then is the planning board's standard? What are we going to do with that information, basically? I mean, if we're going to take it into consideration, then what are we going to do with that information? Are we going to say, okay, you gotta pay off your taxes before we let it happen, or, I mean, I just don't, I just don't know where we would go with that. Um, and I guess the third question I would ask is, is there any, any kind of case law that precipitated this, or situations that happened in town? Not this town, as far as I know, other towns. Not, but not in Brooklyn. Okay. You know more Brooklyn? No. Okay. Uh, of course. Wait, Diane had three questions, so let's let's address those first. <laughs> Hang on to your question. <laughs> well, she just did two. Three. Did three. Well, so what was your what was your first question? The first question was whether we're talking about subdivision and lot line adjustment. So so my thought would be that we should think about all the applications that come in here to see whether they would be susceptible to somebody doing that, or maybe we just ask it as one of our standard questions that applies to all of the kinds of um, applications that come in. And your sec that's my thought. Anyone else want to weigh in on that one? Yeah. This, this started as lot line adjustment. We weren't talking about subdivisions. Same thing can happen with the subdivision. Yeah, somebody could come in and have their lot has a you know, $50,000 tax lien against it. They, they come in, do a sub minor subdivision, they split off two acres. That lot A that has all the taxes ends up as the two acre yeah. piece of swamp. And they you know, basically get out. So I think okay. that. So we doubled it. From lot line plus subdivision. Yeah, I don't, and I don't know if there are any others that would be relevant, but. Question. On, on, on that same question? First question? No, we're still on okay, the yeah. questions. Okay, yeah. So, do, do we answer your first question? Yes, thank you. And what was your second question? Do you remember? <laughs> Is it good yes, one? what are we going to do with the information? Oh, so my thought would be that we would be looking to make sure that we protect 
the other taxpayers and make sure that whatever we, we could just we could say it, if the if the situation warranted it we could make it a condition of the approval would be that the tax lien had to be satisfied or some portion of it um, or if we felt like it wasn't going to they weren't trying to scam out of their taxes then we maybe we just it don't it maybe doesn't affect the out, the decision that's made right it, I think as long as the town can still get the value tax value back I think that would be sort of the most important thing somebody might come in here that's financially distressed and want to do one of these procedures in order to pay their taxes right they're gonna create a two-acre lot they're gonna sell it and use that to satisfy their taxes we just don't want them to do that to get out of their taxes right so right. Diane's second question brought up a question that I'd like to ask is there anything on the books that says you can't do a lot line adjustment or a subdivision without showing that you have no liens? Do we need something like that? Is it? Because we're just, we're is, just it, it, is that any of our business? Well, you gotta protect the town's assets. That, that's our business. Is that the planning board's business is to protect the assets? I would think so, because you're going you're to rule, the planning board is going to rule on the, on the lot line adjustment or the subdivision. Right. Once that's done, the town has no recourse. Well, but that, that, that was my first objection to this whole thing. We're not the cops. Well, you're responsible for the town assets to protect their assets. So you can't do something that's going to hurt the town. You know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. I, I, I uh, we wonder. overstep in our bounds. Making making laws that you know, no, your taxes aren't paid. You can't do this. You can't do that. Shouldn't the tax assessor or the selectman come up with something on our books that states that before we can take action on it? I think the planning board grants the lot line adjustment or the subdivision. Selectmen are not involved in that. Okay. I don't like reinventing the wheel. I would assume that this is, since it came up, it obviously is, is being handled somewhere else. There has to be an RSA somewhere that says, what do you do in this situation? So I think we need to do research and find out first if anybody else is already handling this. Uh, is the planning board being be, supposed to be the one that's supposed to uh, police this? I'd be more comfortable saying, uh, the lien satisfied per RSA, whatever it is. I mean, because we act, we act like a, a, like well, the law enforcement and the cop, then what happens if it's illegal for us to do that? I think we need to find that out. We, not, we may not have the authority to do that. Just saying that we're just supposed to protect the assets may not be the answer completely. That's all. <coughs> what he said. <laughs> we have to find out, you know. I mean, obviously, it, it, it could have an effect on the town assets, and there should be a process for somebody who may be trying to catch up on their taxes. Where does that responsibility lie? Is it the selectman? That's the selectman. That that's the selectman to protect the town's asset with respect to negotiating payment plans. That's why I'd like to find out what others are already doing. They may, if someone comes in with a, a lot line adjustment. It may, in someone else's rules of procedure, trigger that issue going to the selectmen. I don't know. I, I think that, so my first thought was ask for the information, and chances are in the next 10 years, it's never going to come up. It's always going to be filled in, you know, no, no liens. Yeah, so a lot of loopholes closed. But if it does come up, we'll at least find out about it. We have a selectman that sits on the on this board. You guys can, you know, whoever the ex officio is can weigh in on it. You'll be aware of it. And you know, we can deal with it then. We can at that point we can call the lawyer and say, hey, what can we do? Right. That's right. That we're not sure what action you can take. I'm not sure you can not let it go through if there's a lien on it. That was my answer point. I don't I don't know sure I'm not sure what action you can actually take to stop it based upon unpaid taxes, I don't know. But if it ever does come up, well, at least the information yes. will be exposed. We can ask the question. And then we can spend the money on the lawyer to figure out what we can, what we can or should do about it, if it looks fishy. That's right. 
my comment would be, isn't it already illegal? Isn't it already illegal to transfer property with a construction lien? I don't know. I don't know where. Maybe some mechanism or any place for it. I've run across things in my life in all different places about having tax liens, construction liens, etc. satisfied before any other business thing goes through. So, you know, I'm, I'm far putting it on. I, mean, I just want to see something that validates it to do that. Mr. Chairman, um, <laughs> you're meeting now, and we're on item number set, uh, was eight new business. So, <laughs> You can play this large bills. Should we notify him of the vote? Uh, the or is it? Don't I have to accept? Huh? Don't I have to accept? Um, we asked if you objected. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're in. <laughs> I accept and thank you. So I apologize for being tardy. You don't have to apologize to the chairman. Oh, huh? forgot we left the vehicle down in Barrington, so we had to stop and get that too. So, <clears throat> right, where did you leave off on? We're in the middle of something. Yeah, we're we're discussing new business. the new business. idea of asking about tax liens as part of the applications of one or more processes somebody might go through. To with the issue being. Make, making sure we are aware somebody's trying to uh, move value around on their land to avoid to avoid their taxes. So if somebody had a big tax lien against, you know, one lot, you know, subdividing that into two lots where the lot of record that has the tax lien ends up being two acres of swamp swamp or whatever, you know. Right. Um, Diane had three questions on that, and we've gone through two of the questions, right, Diane? Um, correct. And what was the third question? Third question was the source, but uh, uh, I think you said it was some other town. Some other town, thank you. Had an issue. What precipitated this, whether it was a court ruling or here, it was a concern. Okay. All three questions answered. And you had a question. My question was that Diane's second question brought up a good point. Do we have the authority to do it? Okay. So, <coughs> okay. Oh, I'm He's sorry. Chairman F. Ed. Oh, does, do we have to announce that that switch has occurred? I have it. I have it in the minutes already. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. What I would say is, since I have the ability to go down to Concord and use legislative services. I can have them research that to find out if the planning board actually has the authority to even, you know, uh, basically say an application cannot go through because of such. I can find out what the law is. I think the I think the point is you should find out whether they can answer the question. Because yeah. once you get the answer to the question, you can decide how you want to proceed. Whether you talk to a lawyer, what you do next. But the question is, that it, can you ask that question? Is that a fair question? Also, can you do lot line adjustments and subdivisions on lots with tax liens in New Hampshire? Yeah. We just did one. We just did one this time. We, well, maybe it's screwed up. <laughs> no, we increased the value of it, but could have gone the other way too. Right. The lots were effectively merged and made larger. That's what started the discussion way back when. So the proposal is to find out if this is a legal question, if we're legally allowed to ask this question as part of the subdivision application? Yeah, yeah. We want to put it on the application of the lien satisfied. We just have to make sure that we can do that. Other than line line adjustments or subdivisions, where else would, could somebody do that? Well, we have, our, our application covers, if, if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman, our, our application covers 
subdivision, site plan review, lot line adjustment, and conditional, conditional use permit, and merger of existing lots. It's page two of the comprehensive application form, which is appendix B of our rules procedure. To uh, leave that to be clear before you sell it, on me. not from the town's perspective, from the buyer's perspective, but the lien goes with the property. Okay. So if you don't clear it, the new owner carries the lien. Okay. That's like when we do a title search. Okay, Ed, if you can ask that question in concrete, that would be appreciated. So this will be on our agenda for next agenda for next next meeting. Props the vice chairman, by the way. So don't miss any meetings. <laughs> <laughs> You're not saying that either. to say you can't do anything, just have a hard and fast rule that the tax liens have to be satisfied before you can get approval because these may be a very good way for somebody to be able to not lose their house, be able to stay in town, but get value out of their property without having to move. Mm -hmm. I think we, we should make it easy for somebody to do that. We just want to make sure that we're, we're not left holding, we the taxpayers aren't left holding the bag, that they're doing good faith to Good, you know, they're following a good faith effort, right? So I, don't, I think it would be really bad if we said they can't do it. But I don't think, I think we should take it into account and understand that even if, you know, the tax lien can be satisfied even if they do this, right? So that's my thought. I don't know what well, it was. The point you made earlier was we just don't want to be left with a tax lien or something that's worth it. So you can, you can do what you want as long as what's left covers the taxes. So we're just asking the question, and that could lead to another one. Diane? So uh, while you were um, discussing that, I, I Googled it, and I came up with um, a uh, 2000 15 Board of Selectmen meeting minutes in Harrisville, New Hampshire, in which the selectmen accepted a payment to effect a partial release of a lien due in order to permit a lot line adjustment for an individual. So that's a good starting point for us to, you know, if we want to move this forward. And so. So they didn't pay it off entirely. So what, what's interesting, though, <laughs> is that to the point about whose authority, I mean, it, it, it showed up in the Board of Selectmen meeting minutes for that town. Um, and, and yet it goes back to the planning board. So that's the place I think we ought to contact the Harrisville planning board and find out what they're doing for their review process. That's what where um, the uh, selectmen or an official get caught growing a pot. It doesn't say that in this. <laughs> what was the date? Know about that. 2015. Do you have a date of 2015? Yes. What was the uh, January 8th. There was no controversy. It was just part of their regular meeting stuff. So. Want to move on to old business? This discussion of pending state legislation. Next. 
next meeting I should have the um, review of the um, additions, deletions to the land use regulation manual so we can review them. And in your packet, we have packets, in your file in front of you, you'll have House Bill 265. And House Bill 265, which is what I mentioned last time we were here, relative to the accessory dwelling unit. And it said that we're going to be voting on that legislation. We voted on it last week. It was on consent. So it passed right through, just for your edification. Last week, we met for two days in house session, and we had 275 bills that we went through. Two days. One of them. Possible. It was possible. I don't know how we did it, but we did it. Barrows. 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 Spoke. So, House Bill 265 passed with an amendment. So an amendment was offered, and that's on the last page here. And the amended bill, the amendment replaces, basically replaces the whole bill after the clause of the change. So if you go to the original, where it's bold, where it said the municipality may prohibit accessory dwelling units associated with the multiple single family dwelling units. That section basically comes out and it becomes, it becomes this on the amendment. It says the municipality may prohibit accessory dwelling units associated with multiple single family dwellings attached to each other, such as townhouses, and with manufactured housing as defined in RSA 674, colon 31, subsequent condominium conveyance of any accessory dwelling unit separate from that of the principal dwelling unit shall be prohibited, notwithstanding the provisions of RSA 356-B, colon 5, unless allowed by the municipality. The amended analysis, this is what we see on the floor when somebody brings an amendment. This bill authorizes the municipality to limit the right to have an accessory dwelling unit for certain single family dwellings and prohibits condominium conveyance of an accessory dwelling unit. This now is passed the House with the amendment and it's now in the Senate ready to be heard in committee. That date hasn't been set yet when the, when the Senate will hear it. But as soon as I find that date out, I can notify the board. And if you have comments on it, you could actually go down and testify on it. Will that they, more act with will they define what certain means? It's multi multi multiple single family dwellings attached to each other. That's what the certain is. So uh, maybe I got the wrong page, but it looks like what you had gave out is the amended bill, the first. Yeah, they, they, look, they look the same. Right? Yeah, yeah. That you, it's, I think you could give us the amended version of it. Because it, I don't remember what it said, but it didn't say this before. Are you ready for one? Yeah. Thank you. Well, what I did is I print, I have a habit of printing out the, the house bill. And then I go on to the docket page, and the docket has the amendment in it. So I think you're right, Dave. Now put it into one thing. You can see how it's two separate. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I remember that when we read it the first time, it didn't make sense. It was like contradictory to it with itself. And this looks, I don't see a problem with this. So the one that he handed out from the last meeting, <coughs> the one that he handed out from the last meeting for 265, yeah, I'll read it. It says a uh, municipality is not required to allow but may permit accessory dwelling units within the within or attached to single family dwelling unit that shares a common wall. Condominiums as defined in RSA 356 B3 
and manufactured housing as defined as RSA 674 code 3-1. So the amendment says the amended bill amend the bill by replacing all after the enacting clause with the following. And you said you didn't see issues with the way it was redone. Duplexes, yeah. and of course, condominiums. And I was in the hearing uh, when they heard this, and that was one of the concerns. So they went back in the committee and executive session, they worked it out, came up with some amendments, and uh, this is what came up with. And it answers the concerns with the original SB 146. Which were that somebody was going to have a townhouse that had accessory dwelling units in each unit or a mobile home. But that's good because now we know this. We, we have to. We don't. Well, do we have any townhouses in Brookfield? No. And we don't allow mobile homes. Correct. We allow mobile homes. They have a certain size limit. They have to be a certain size. And not full time home or manufactured house. Manufactured house. We, the resident has to be a certain size, whether it's a mobile home or otherwise. We don't exclude mobile homes. They just have to be 840 square feet. Wow. That's good. That's right. I thought mobile homes were could be in town, but they don't have to be part time. You can't, you can't, you can't make a trailer of the residence. Right. That's what we say in the zoning. So a manufactured home, like a, a metal building, double wide. That we're right, 840 square feet. Okay. We got a lot of those. Okay. Oh, we have some. Yeah. So a single wide could meet that criteria too. Good. Well, my 72 is 864. I think our number is 864. 864 is whatever it's 8 something. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Mr. Chairman, so I brought this to the board and I'm bringing it to the other planning boards in the area too, just so we're aware that you know we, we, need to, we should review our zoning to make sure that after the bill passes, to um, make sure we have, if we have to make any changes to the zoning, we, we, you can, and also the ability for anybody to go and testify. Like if you wanted to testify and say you have no problem with this and this is a good thing and it clears it up, then it would have to pass. So this is going to be taken up by the Senate at some point? Yes. So there'll be an op op another opportunity for public input? Correct. Thank you for that, Ed. Any public comments? We have public today. Member comments? Yes, sir. Uh, we have to certify those warrants that were approved. That could be done within a certain number of days, right? Virginia has to do something magical with those. We have to make sure they get stopped. Do we have to resubmit them to her or does she have them? I don't know what the process is, but I know we have a, a deadline on what we have to do to get them. Yeah, I think we have something like 30 days. It must be 30 days to update the the zoning ordinance. Jesus, the sun and then resubmit that to... But somebody needs that action order to get that done. I'm just glad I'm not the chairman. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. 
Um, I would have already had a, a copy of that, but for some reason the uh, memory chip on the printer is not printing that out at the moment. I'm still waiting for it to, to print out, so I doubt it's going to happen by the end of the meeting, but um, that's why it's not with us right now for certification. Okay. And my other comment was, mm -hmm. our, our, I think our zoning is pretty tough on, on cell towers. And technology is changing significantly where, where I think cell towers are wireless is going to replace even cable TV over the next like, 10 years or whatever. I think it might be wise to take a look at our zoning with respect to cell towers. Um, we don't want to be isolated with respect to coverage in the town. And we just got another request because I don't think we have any cell towers in this town. They're close, right. but I know we have dead spots also. And if that's where the technology is going, I think we should review it and make sure we can work with the, the, the companies to get decent coverage. Is that something you put on um, new business for the next meeting, George? Yes. We can review that. Okay. On the uh, cell towers and communication, we do have a bunch of stuff in our zoning. It wasn't as that made null and void by some legislation recently. Wind, wind energy plants, yeah. Wind energy plants. I think it was wind energy. Wind energy. A, a, a friend of mine in, in Vermont commented how tough Vermont is on cell towers. They don't want to see them anywhere. Yet they're letting people put up ugly solar panels all over the place. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, towers, uh, especially the way they're disguised in such a wooded town such as ours, they wouldn't even be visible to anyone except Rob's dog. Yeah. <laughs> probably, he's probably <laughs> barking at that tower right now. <laughs> Idiot. That's how I know which way to shoot. <laughs> you hear the barking, you <laughs> shoot toward toward the market dog. The flicky <laughs> line is the, is the direction. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Gee, Ed. Dad's not the best neighbor ever. <laughs> so, what, what made Rich comment on that, I think, is the letter that we got that you should, we should revisit that now that you're here because we were thinking maybe that we should invite these people to come in with their questions. It would be easier for us to uh, be prepared and answer the questions here. About It's about cell towers. But did that go back to you, George? I don't think so. Yeah, I think you. Mm -hmm. I don't have it. Fine. Uh oh. No, it's an email, so I'm sure there's an yeah. electronic version of it somewhere. Oh, I thought it was in that envelope. It was with the envelope. Uh, no, this that was is next to it. It was different. This is the place. That's the exercise. Yeah. Call my copy. Do you have a copy of it? Yeah. You do? Get a copy of everything. Yeah. That's that's stuff that we we're supposed to, we we're probably going to talk about. You didn't rip I, us off, did you? I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I only picked check, up papers. Check I didn't take any. Check the camera. She's off of the uh, that's not good. screen. Yeah. 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 Is it? Yeah. 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 So maybe we have the guy come in. We can pick his brain on what, how so what, our our, what's, what the current technology is. Sure, yes. With her, uh, we know that the cable companies are not installing any more plant. People have checked again, and they're just not going to do it. And you can see why with the change in technology. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. The, the gentleman that's listed on there, Mr. Shoemaker, I believe. Yes. He's trying to put up the uh, interoperable system for first responders and wants to know how our zoning is in order to put up on existing towers. Did it say? Or new, or new towers? I would think that if we, if we went to um, Verizon, who, who puts, I mean, can the town own a, own a tower? 
and then rent it out to the to these people and rent it out to um, Verizon and others. Usually, there's, there's, a, there's a company called it creates this AMT American Tower Company, which generally goes to a town, finds the land, puts the tower up, and then leases the tower space to Verizon, Sprint, or whatever. Then they pay the landowner rent for that tower. Their land, whatever the tower is. But I don't want the town also the tower. So we don't have any of that. that we're, we don't have a lease with anybody to do that. We don't have any towers. None? None anymore. None. And we get some sponsors you can't get served. We know that. We have good service because there's the one up the hill from us. The red light. The red blinking light. Where is, that, where is that tower? Is that, right? is that tower radio or is it? It's a cell tower. It's, it's all, cell tower. yeah, it's whatever they hang on. But yeah, I mean, it's cell tower at least. That's, I think it's like off of, I want to say it's off Long Ridge it is. Road. It is. It's Deer Ridge Road off of Long Ridge Road. So I bring this up because cool. it, there's an already, uh, there's a large group in town that wishes the service is better. So maybe we could be proactive in town to, you know, to put that idea across to actually have more coverage. And we may find that, I mean, I don't, I'm just wish, wishful thinking, but maybe the technology's gotten such that you, you know, don't need a 300 foot tower in order to make it be effective and cost effective. You know, if we could have something that was down around tree level or below, it would be, I don't, nobody would object to it, right? Because they would just wouldn't see it. People would save a ton of dough if they ditch Verizon. Yeah, it says that they're either looking to co-locate three antennas and radios along with associated equipment on current wireless towers or create new sites within Brookfield. They can't put it on existing towers because we don't have any. Rick? Mr. Chairman, I'd suggest to have Judge invite them in so we get the whole story yeah, and be prepared to answer some questions. Can you contact Charlie Shoemaker? Yes, I'm happy Invite him to the next meeting? Yes. Then we can find out his needs and, and we can use his information to adjust our zoning on tiles if we have to. Right. We can compare what we currently have in our zoning to what he has for questions and see if it's allowed. Right. Uh, any other member comments? Rob? Uh, our zoning is has gotten a lot cleaner over the last few years, except for wind energy and cell towers. Those are just big, ugly chunks of zoning that we got from somewhere. Right. Um, you know, it might be interesting to see if we could, if there's a way to clean that up and make it simpler. So that we, I don't think any of us have any idea if somebody came in and said, I want to put a tower here, I don't think anyone would have any idea whether that was allowed by the zoning or not. You know? Mr. Chairman? George? Uh, that was originally, uh, the um, the wind energy was brought forward to the planning board uh, by Mr. Martin. Mm -hmm. And uh, the planning board at that time had made some adjustments. And from what I understand, after the fact, this is talking about something like possibly nine years ago. Uh, from what I understand, our, the way the calculations are done to make it allowable disallows anybody from being able to have that in the town, the way the calculations are done. That's the way it was put to me after the fact. And that has not been revisited since it was made. And what's that new technology, helical? Wind towers? Yeah, it's a vertical, vertical wind towers. So it's not even a big problem anymore. You still have to get up in the wind. <laughs> yeah. Well, they have now that look like trees. Yeah. We've seen those. They actually, the leaves are what spin and actually create yeah. the energy. Kind so of cover, cover Moose Mountain with those. That would be awesome. There you go. <laughs> uh, 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 zoning. The wind tower is in the south tower. I, I think that's about a third of the zoning. It's mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. the intersection. It would be nice to streamline that. Okay, I think we can put that on our agenda for a future meeting, but I think we need to meet with Charlie Shoemaker first and then attack that cell tower one first. Good plan. Rob? Uh, just, I think master plan is should be on our agenda at some point. Um, 
I think it's we're due. I think is it this year that we're due or overdue? Okay. It's coming up. I think it's this year. Eighteen. Because we had discussed it last year. Yeah, that's right. We started barely started on it and then got distracted. Well, at least we talked about it. Uh, May 2006, so I think it's, we're officially overdue now. So we should think about starting. But that is a reminder, correct? For a discussion of the master plan? Okay, put it on the agenda. Um, we can, yeah, we'll, we'll address it next meeting as well. We'll come up with a time we can meet about it and discuss it further. Okay. Does that work, Rob? Keep it out in front of us and just... Yeah, I think that before we actually do any work, we need to think about how we want to do the work. Our, I think we're... I think the rules of procedure somewhere has, has uh, a committee that could be formed for that. So it's a question, what do we want to do it as the business of this board or as a business of a committee? that is going to try to put something together, how are we going to gather input, how do we get citizens involved, whatever, you know, all those issues, you know, so a bunch of stuff before we even get started to figure out how we want to do it. I thought we had discussed the committee in the past, previous meetings that we had had. We discussed both, and I think that, you know, we discussed committees and we discussed having it at the meetings, 30 chairs here, people would show up and do it right here as part of our meeting. Yeah, I think that if we, my personal opinion is that if we don't have a lot of other business we're doing, we should, you know, there's no reason not, we should just do it at this meeting rather than have a committee and, you know, doing it. Um, you can always form a committee to, you know, do parts of it, right? If you want something, you know, a committee that's going to focus on one thing or a committee that's going to put together a survey or whatever you might want to do, right? I think it's good advice to do that. Any other member comments? Yes, um, I believe Ossipi is also starting to do their master plan, so if you care to watch more planning board meetings, you could certainly do that and watch them go through the process. On the TV? Yeah. How are they approaching it? The same way, they're going to have uh, charrettes, and I, I believe that they're, I don't know if they're doing the entire thing, or I know they're working on the transportation part. They're working on accepting, um, accepting the information from a build-out study and using that for part of the master plan. Um, so it's a process and they've started their own committee. What is the length of the site to get to all the meetings to watch? Governmentoversight.com and the planning boards will be under the plan. Governmentoversight.com. Spell S I T U. World we have. <laughs> You're still getting hits from Europe. Uh, Iceland. 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 Poland. Poland. Oh, I thought you told me that. Yeah, I have. I have a list of where the where the signal comes in from. Good sign. I thought last year that we had also had some examples of other towns' master plans and we're comparing them with what we currently have. And it all come to a pretty agreed upon decision that we would like to shorten our master plan and simplify it. So I think that we, we had some good discussion over last year and said so we lost some energy on it and got left behind. So we'll tack that up. Diane? Um, it just occurred to me that uh, one of the emails I believe that George had forwarded to us was that OEP has announced their annual plan conference. Uh, Rick and I each attended last year and um, thought that it was I thought it was a worthwhile trip to Concord for three quarters of the day. Um, I haven't looked at their at their program yet, but. Um, so There's so many valuable things to sit in on over there. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, that, you know, that it was we only had the opportunity to do a couple, but there's more. There's more to it. So yeah. it's it's like Diane said, it's it's worth going. You have a date for that, Diane? I don't. I didn't. I didn't that. It's on the email <laughs> that George sent us. It's in, yeah, it's in one. Okay. But if you go to the OE, OEP's website and hit planning, I'm sure that there's a, a direct link on there. They're usually pretty good. Pretty good about posting that. And I have a comment as well. I just wanted to thank you all for choosing me as chairman. Yeah. Dude, it was a three. It was a three two. The, vote, the vote was three two. I mean, you just barely made it. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us argued pretty vehemently against you. So just yeah, sort of a couple of knuckles there just to get it through. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Rob. So. Um, just procedurally, where we have the charrette issue, because Rick was elected as selectman, so once he's sworn in in a couple days, he will not. He'll have to give up his seat. Right. So we're gonna have an open mm -hmm. seat. Um, our rules of procedure say that um, he needs to do a written resignation, which we then would have a motion and a vote on to accept it, and then. And then we basically are announcing that there's an open seat, and then the following we can't fill that until the following meeting. Okay. So, I don't know if you want to resign I'll now. I'll resign now, so you can do that and, and not miss a month without a member. That's what I was going to suggest: is that if we're wrapping up the meeting now anyway. We I mean we might as if you don't I mean if you if you want to, so we'll need something so written. I will. And then, and then we can do a motion and a vote. Well. Yeah, you can have well, there, were, there were three names on the ballot. Two were here, and one has come to meetings, Bill. Yes. And um, put an effort and showed an interest in this. And we know Diane declined being on the board at this time, so he would be a, a good choice. I can contact him too. Yeah, that, I mean. My, my thought is that he'd be an obvious choice. But it's, you know, I mean, you'd think that if we just had an election, if somebody else really wanted to be on the board, they would have thrown their hat in the ring. But maybe not. I mean, somebody might, else might come forward. But, right. Right. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, don't we, also, don't we also have we have two other members? Do we have enough for a quorum in the OMDR? We do. We don't need four. I spoke to Chickaroni. And yeah, the next week, we'll know whether he's going to return to the board or give a letter of resignation. Okay. Who's the other one you're thinking of? Jim. Bring him up. Jim did. Jim was not this time, right? Yeah, he's not on the board. And so he was the other seat that was just voted in. Saturday, 10 o'clock? Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how well attended yes. Saturday is versus yes. a normal yes. Tuesday night. Yes. 60 some odd people voted last Tuesday, which is about 40 people less than normal for a town election. But we'll see how it goes Saturday. Do you have a sense that it's going to be more or fewer? There's no idea. First Saturday. Ever probably. I think it could be. It was tough Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. It was tough to snowmobile down the road. <laughs> <laughs> is that on the website? Yeah. Okay. Is it on the calendar? Because the calendar last time I looked showed yeah. that. Okay, so that was changed also. Yes. Did it go out in the email alert? The email alert system? No. <coughs> We're going to, there's something wrong with the system because one of the web people have been talking to the vendor. Sometimes it goes out and sometimes it doesn't go out. We're going to trigger it again there. Just to make sure it goes out. If we get better attendance, can we actually keep the, uh, keep the meeting on a second? The warrant article. Last time 
what was it, two or three years ago? It was defeated. That happened on Saturday? Yep. Yeah. People like the tradition. I got a written letter of resignation from Rich Surrett. Uh, it's addressed uh, to the Brookville Planning Board Chairman David Champion. I, Rick Surrett, resign from the planning, uh, Brookville Planning Board as of the above date, stated March 16, 2017, and signed by Rick Surrett. Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the resignation. Second for discussion. Thank you for your service over these years. I didn't get accepted yet. Second <laughs> <laughs> well, for discussion. Discussion. And that's my discussion. Okay. If you choose to accept. Thank you. So you second the discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. You can follow that too, George, please. Thank you. And this is Charlie's contact list. Are you going to talk about how we're advertising? That was the issue last time, right? We didn't uh, advertise it. Well, so the, yeah, I think the root cause of the issue that I, I mean, at least once, most of the board walked into the room not knowing anything was up. And then there was, you know, resignation was announced and a new person was put, put forward and voted and voted on like all within about 30 seconds. And I proposed that we have this, you know, an announcement followed by, you know, then the next meeting we deal with it, right? Just because it's not an emergency to get to the next meeting, right? We can just deal with that first and have fill the board up again. So um, just have the process more open because um, it felt like somebody was potentially, you know, just stacking the board the way that they wanted, right? So I think the more open, transparent process just eliminates any questions like that. So, um, anyway, the um, I think you're sp supposed to make an. Uh, I think it's. I think we just said um, that you announced it at the meeting. I think um, when a member, this is page one of twenty for the rules procedure at the bottom, three point two member members. Uh, when a member position becomes vacant, which just happened. The chair shall announce the vacancy during the meeting. The vacancy shall not be filled until the next regularly scheduled meeting of the planning board following the announcement. If, the, if a vacancy exists, the remaining members of the board shall appoint a new member to serve until the next election, at which time the vacancy will be put on the ballot. The term on the ballot shall be the remainder of the original term. Selection, qualifications, term, removal of members, filling of vacancies shall conform to RSA 673-6. So I think for now, I'll just, just announce, and it'll be in the meeting minutes, that we're going to fill a position next time. Evening. How are we doing? Have a seat. How <laughs> busy tonight. All kinds of trouble going on here, though. <laughs> 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 have a good night. Thanks. Thanks. So the announcement will be that we have an open seat. On the planning board. Yep. And we're going to fill it next time, presumably. So we can find, yeah. a, find a warm body next week. Looks like a cold one. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, did you want me to put that on the uh, website? If you could post it, please. Yes. Now, didn't we come up with a, a letter as well um, asking people to show interest towards the planning board? I thought we had to come up with some verbiage. I think we tried to. I don't think any of us were happy once we saw it. I can the whole thing. Put my own letter in the uh, newsletter. There's one in the, um, the, the beaten book, right? Come in. It also asked for. You put that in? Yeah. Okay, that is it. Yeah. If there's a way we can add that onto the planning board link on the website, just to announce that there's a, an open seat. I put it higher up. 
Is that something you could do, George? Just uh, take the letter from there and Yes. Uh, well, I, what I will do is um, I will, uh, it depends on how you want it to be put on there. If you want it to be put on there, say, as, a, as an announcement, I could do that. Or I could submit it to um, um, Rose and have her put it someplace else on the, on the, front, on the home page, however you want to do it. I agree with Rich that it would be a good idea to have it on the front of the page. It, it shows on the planning report. You read it? And it's under alternates. It says the planning board needs alternate members. Alternates participate in the meetings by keeping up with the with the meeting business and fill in for absent elected planning board members. We need informed people in the room to keep business moving forward. Please consider coming to the planning board meeting and see how we work for the town. Meetings are open to the public. Please plan to attend a meeting soon. Exclamation. She's very motivational. <laughs> Is that what you said? Oh, that's a lot meaner than that. <laughs> <laughs> what page is that on, please? 35. Thank you. I put a, Mr. Chairman, I put something on the front of the um, an announcement on the front page saying there's, there's a vacancy. I agree with that. If you fill the next meeting, please come to. You can point to the description further back in the website, but I think we want an announcement up front. Okay. The announcement's just, you're talking about something bigger than those little yeah, things up top? There's a lot of room on the front, on the web page. So it's just an announcement then? Yeah, and then point to the, right up in the planning board area if you want. Okay. Sure. Right, can you take care of that? Sure, so this right here will be in the planning board area, this this particular, because it's not enough room on the front page? Right. right. The announcement will be on the front. Okay. If there's an open position. The announcement is that this, yeah, like you said, an open position on the planning board. But That's anyone who shows interest in that open position is going to, at the very least, end up as an alternate. I right. <laughs> guarantee it. <laughs> any, any, any sign of any interest at all, they'll get something for it. They'll get roped into something. <laughs> Make it sound so, so nice. <laughs> Any other member comments? Meeting adjourned.